countries that come under the British Empire and the way we live, how we live, this country that we live in are all of a result of everything that happened during British Empire. And I think in some communities, particularly in the African Caribbean communities, there are some very important conversations and dialogue that they've been able to have, but also some of the indigenous communities in North America where they've they're starting to try and look at, hold on a minute, when people came over here in ships and, you know, for commercial purposes, exploited us, uh, took advantage of us and ruled over us uh, in certain types of way. How did they take us away from our natural, authentic ways of being that we inherited from our ancestors? It's in our DNA. And how did it kind of change us as a people? I think until at an individual level, and at community level, we have these conversations. We live very in a very confused way because what we're living isn't necessarily what our gurus gave us. It's something that the forces of kind of colonialism, uh, in the case of many of the British Empire, we say British Empire. If it wasn't the British, it could have been someone else. Yeah, very percent. Like it's not, we're not going to sit here and hear on everything and everything British, right? In some parts of the world, it was the Spanish. In some parts of the world, it was the French. In some parts of the world, people were just doing it to each other. But we have to look at the history as it is, and that's that British colonialism left a lot of our traditions and orders and patterns and gave birth then just to kind of generations of confused people in a lot of ways. So if we talk about the Nang Singh specifically, some of the early exchanges between the British and the Hang Singhs, uh, you know, relevant to the period of Raj, the most kind of significant ones are probably around 1807. Uh, and the famous incident where Mother and Ji Singh signs a treaty with the East India Company, allowing them to essentially become protectorates of the Fulkian states. So these are six states with their own Maharajas that don't fall under Maharaji Singh's British Empire. And Maharaji Singh expanded his territories you know, to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kashmir, was parts of modern China. And the other Sikh Raji felt, well, either he could potentially take over our states or we go to the British for support and to become our protectorates. This is what enables the British to extend their boundary from Delhi into now uh, our ancestors' homeland of Punjab. Uh, and Pant Prakash, there's one other incident which is quite significant as well, mentioned by Bhairat and Singh Pangu, which is when uh, British came into Delhi, that at the same time they were signing treaties with the Mughal Emperor and celebrating in pomp that we are now the new Raji of Delhi, that a, a group of Khalsa, before Jim Young Singhs comes, and there's young Khalsa, yeah, like pay taxes and starts taxing the people of Delhi, taking from the rich, taking from the governors, and, and doing their lot more better, that they, who, from the times of Abdali, had seen themselves as we are seeing Delhi, the Raja, yeah. and the saying of, they see Delhi totally, they see Delhi totally, that, you know, they would do Raj of Delhi, they would take over Delhi and then be like, it's time to go back to Anandpur Sahib to celebrate Hula Mahalla. Now we're not going to miss Hula Mahalla for anything. That if Delhi gets out of order, we'll come back and take it. So the British are thinking, we 
you are these people with their swords, their beards, their blue dresses that, you know, we've just done this massive celebration of becoming like rulers of Delhi and these guys have just like trampled on our pump. Yeah. And, you know, from 1807, where Ali Fula saying effectively, he starts trying to break the peace that Madhra Ji Singh is creating with the British, they sign a treaty. And Ali Fula Singh at a time when the twin of British soldiers is celebrating quite noisily outside the bars I went up in the gate then sends an Yang Singh to go and stop them. By some accounts, they knock the Nang Singh's the mother off or they speak to him rudely, you know? And then Ali Fula Singh sends the Fawad Vijak and Boli Mardo, go and shoot them, you know? There wasn't much to do, I said, I love you, 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 I love you. That was the Nang Singh way, we'll ask you once nicely, the second time you're going to die. <laughs> Such was the rule of the land and the way that the people who ruled it had to be. And from then, really, that period of time, you see that where the Sikh Raja are going to the British Empire or the East India Company, right? as protectors and Badr and Jee Singh Ji is then sending a truce with them he's trying to come to terms of peace with them the Akali Fula Singh is like Goli Maru yeah shoot them and you know on occasions even when the kind of peace treaties are done the Akali Fula Singh then decides to set fire to all the British encampments and I would have yeah it's head for the Akali Fula Singh Bolja Namra Sar but also at Sabo Gitalwandi thanks which because it was Babaji's headquarters and then Baba Jain Sanchi's time it became a headquarters and even before that Baba Deep Singh or Shildi Misal. So it had been a headquarters of the Dal and it's one of the reasons why Pyara Singh Paddam, very famous Sikh Padavan, refers to it as the Panjwata because it had been the headquarters of Buddha Dal. Uh, it's a very prominent shrine. But Ali Fula Singh leaving the sense fire to all the British encampments. So this is the early British experience of the Dahang Singhs that we're finding it easier to deal with other people. But these guys are saying fire to us, they're shooting us, they're causing havoc. And, you know, it, it you know, that sort of sets the tone yeah. then for the relationship between the Dahang Singhs and these Indian company early on. Yeah, and uh, briefly mentioned that the um, British also had uh, people uh, writing about the Hang Singh as well because they were quite questionable who they are because they met them at the Lee, like you mentioned, but they weren't, you know, they didn't really know what they were like and how they asked the Mughals to give us an interpretation or give us a story about them, who they are, and how that was also manipulated. If you can touch yeah. base on that as well. So the Mughals asked Shah Alam, who was one of the last kind of Mughal emperors, of who are these people and he, instead of saying that they're Gursikhs, that they, they, they do rule in Punjab and they, you know, they, when they sacked Delhi after Kuntali, they signed treaties, they got their Gurdwari made, we pay them taxes um, and uh, you know, they control the territories north of um, Delhi. They, <clears throat> he effectively thought, like, let me poison the British against them. The these guys are thieves, these guys are bandits. And they've took over the land, they don't have anyone's authority and what have you else. But the British were quite intelligent. <clears throat> There's something that can be, uh, is very important when we study the British and we study the East India Empire and any history, is when you at the, when you come from the community who maybe was at the receiving end or the negative end of that, right? You still have to be able to look at where were these guys smart, where were these guys good, are really able to do what they did and learn from it because if you don't learn from it it will keep beating itself like in a lot of ways they were the victors they were ruling Funny. such a big part of the world they were obviously doing some things right they were obviously being smart one of the things they did was they they planned and they gathered information so one of the military intelligence officers or political agent you know various titles that they were given at the time which in today's age we wouldn't see as your typical military intelligence officers. Uh, now comes sketch of the Sikhs, the prominent one that comes to mind. He goes to the Akal uh, And this is early, in the very early part of the 1800s. And he sees that at the Akal which is referred to as the Akal Bunga, 
this is the headquarter of the Akalis, of the Nang Singhs, right? There's a clear correlation, Akal Bunga, Akali Fodj, right? Okay. Head, headquarters. We say now that it's the political authority of the Gursikhs. Uh, we know how we can question how much political power and authority and how far does it extend, you know, it's a, it's a question. And but at that time, Ali Fula Singh, the the Fudge, is fighting battles all over the world, is a political authority. What he sees at the Akal Takan <clears throat> is that this is the headquarter of the Akali Nahang Singhs. He writes clearly that Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Dasam Granth Sahib are Prakash, which is a very, very important point. You know, people talk about this today, and it's like, you know what, Ali Fula Singh, they have the Prakash seat. I don't think there's anyone alive question him. And if he had the Sumbhat and Prakash at the time of his Jathadari at the Akal Thakrit, then Jathadar sins then should be ashamed. That, that's the standard of Akal Thakrit Jathadari. Well. And then he also sees that when people take Amrit, they come to the Nahang Singhs to take Amrit. That when people want to become Khalsa, the path of initiation to become Khalsa is to come to the Akali Nang Singhs. They make Amrit. And from that Amrit, they then tell you that you're now part of the Khalsa. So they're starting to understand, right, what's the Khalsa, what are Sikhs, what's the role of the Nang Singhs. And the other very important thing that he writes is that whenever there's an issue in the Sikh community, the Agurmata is called by the Akali Nang Singhs at the Akal Takat. And that the Akali Nang Singhs tell all the other Sikh Maharaji and officers of different states and whatever they, they, whatever they've come from that just now for the purposes of this Gurmata, this meeting, we're all sitting here as brothers, which requires us to forget any previous dispute that we have and put the affairs of the Pant as foremost and put our minds to how we resolve it, make a decision and then an act on it. So the Nang Singhs are the peacemakers. They're the actioners, they're the bringer together, they're the initiators into faith, they're the holders of political authority. They are, they, they're written of as like saint, like almost deity, like, like people see them as devte. People are scared of them and they respect them, right? And there's one other thing that's written there, which is if the Akal Takant ceases, or the Akal Bunga ceases to become their headquarters and they are pushed from this area, then their influence will decline as well. So this is nearly 40 years before the Anglo-Sikh War, where the British eventually take the job and then, you know, battle with Baba Anumar Singh and then they shoot to kill and then nearly wiping out the Aung Singhs. So before they've done what they're going to do, they've started looking into it and 40 years, 50 years beforehand, asking the question and trying to get the information, what do we, what do we need to do to get rid of these people? And they had that answer. And like, it's not like, they found them not this opposition. This is what Gong is. Just fight to a war, to a battle on them. They went through extensive research. They went through who they are who, and everything that they know about them. They're basically the whole biography of who they are and found out all the weak points and the strengths to identify what they can do by analyzing the whole structure of who they are, what the Mariyadda is like, how things are initiated into the bond, like you mentioned. Uh, you take Amrit, you go to the Dal, you go to Vardadal, take Amrit, and then you continue on if you want to join the Dal. So, or we'll carry on with your day to day life. But it was the Vardadal that actually did the ceremonies. And that's a very important thing to know as well that they did extensive research. That it wasn't just a quick thing that, oh, they found that it's the Hung Sings that did it, and then they went to a ball, uh, ball with love. They did fine, extensive research that, as you mentioned, uh, the first war against Punjab, against the uh, Sikh Empire, was 40 years later, and they had those 40 years to meticulously plan and do everything. So that's very important to know. Yeah. yeah. And then between, like, you know, I think we talk, um, see if we look at the period of Akali Fula Singh's time, or even after Akali Fula Singh, they, they, you know, the British account of Nang Singh's put to shame contemporary knowledge and perception of Nang Singh's. But the British are saying that people look at them as their day 
And now people look at them like how they look at them and they know so little about them that and I say it in very simple terms so that maybe like some of the people watching and and, and our second Punjabi community and what are from the eighteen hundreds went to Punjab and learn what about young things and what they've done and then then Punjabi say educate people on right? Right. <laughs> so again it comes to one of those points of colonialism and we look at the good and we look at the bad and we take also the blessings from the class that had it not been for accounts like that our own people would have deleted and eradicated our history like we didn't exist so the accounts of the spies the accounts of the end of it or whatever actually are some of the most significant historical accounts that we have of our history and what we look like oh no I don't know what I'm saying 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 I was picking themselves up we were in the most educated community. And the ones that were educated, one of the video you can see of the Gantha Lakanasige, of that they are the Kanasi writing about themselves, Hana. So we saw things like when Bhadar and Ji Singh would have you know dignitaries over visiting and creating his armies that the Nyang with everyone standing to attention, that the Nyang Singhs are swearing of so they are trying to, again, they can't get their head around this. He's the Maharaja, like, man's the respect of his people. But he's got this one section in his community. We are also have a part of them, which is part of the army. They were the Khalsa, and they were kind of, they had their independence from the Sikh army in the sense that Akali Fula Singh could summon Maharaja Ranjit Singh and punish him, which he did. But they were also part of the Sikh army and that they participated in the Khalsa campaigns to expand the Sikh empire, the Khalsa empire, Haram. They, they saw that these guys, they treat Mother and Jesus saying a bit different. Yeah. And, and I think this is always another important point that we look at today that people look at, like, oh, we lost our dog, we lost Mother and Jesus saying, and, and what have you else. Magic events, right? But for the Hang Singh, for Khalsa, our part of Khalsa Raj was Guru Gobind Singh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji the Grand Pandha Kalas for Pandha, the, the institution of the Grand Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj, the institution of the Pandh, the Khalsa Pandh, is where the blessings of Akalpur are. And Jishnu Bhakse Sivta Sala, Nanak Padsa, I Padsa, that whoever Guru Maharaj blesses to sing their praises and do their seva and embark on that path of the Pandh, they are the Raji Maharaj, the true rulers of this earth. So, I think for a lot of Sikhs where they like, we lost our ruler, we lost our empire, we get miscited on actually those good Sikhs who are Jodhivay with Guru Granth Sahib, with the Panth that give in their life for it. The worldly Raji, they never recognize them for much. Anji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've seen that as well. Like if we, even if we go by the Sikh empire, first first that we think about is Maharaja. I mean, it's pretty much obvious. They were the Raja, they were the king of the Sikh empire. But the Akal Sina, the Kali Forge. So it's not they're not mentioned much apart from when the Hang Singhs do their Gata, we go about the history now. They're not really talked much about. And also when once we lead on to talk about the first Anglo Sikh war, we realize that without the Kal Sina, Mahara Jin Singh couldn't do much as well, as even he was paying to um uh, the Kal Sina that we need your help and we, we need you to fight for us and they did, and if it wasn't for them, the British would have taken over much before as well. Because mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Maharaj Jeet Singh, the way he expanded his empire was having other uh, emperors and mayors under his uh, Raj. And with that, the British, they could just easily buy them out with money, with materialistic items, which did end up happening. And if it wasn't for the Khalsa, you know, Punjab would have been taken over much, much before. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's the telling thing. I think the thing is that other people were prone to being bought out as they were, right? Now, things have discarded material wealth. They can't be bought with material wealth. That's the important thing. People, even now, they're always looking to leaders, yeah? Most of their leaders are on wages. Like, most of their leaders need to go out and try and get votes from people. Thank you. Right? What do they expect from them? Right? You take other people, anyone, whether it's Nahang Singhs or anyone else that in Gursiki has come even from another tradition, when they're not on a wage, they're not getting paid, 
they don't have to get people's votes and they're just out there doing fearlessly what they're doing, then they're a leader. Because they're not bound by any other authority, you know, or an employer or a boss or or, a, or votes that they're accountable for that they have to pay to a popular opinion. They can look after the interests of their own community directly. And they, that, that's a very important note because you will see today with the political parties and everything or even worldly leaders they'll have to go according to their party or what they've been elected to do for. And we see, we've got one day prime ministers, but it's not their only decision that goes in play. It's what the whole party and what the community wants. And with the Sena, it was completely different. It was what they found was beneficial for them and for the fund. And they did it that way. They didn't have to slack on certain things to please others. So it weren't a crowd pleaser, but they did what they had to do and they did what was right unapologetically and not caring about anyone else and what they thought. Yeah. And, and I think also like if you look at their legacy just, just for a moment as well, people sometimes think about, you know, they look at the history of Dada from the Bob Hussein's time. And, and I've seen this in modern historical accounts where people present a version of history that's purely written, right? Uh, and I think it's important to, as a Dada Singh, actually address all of these things because you know, it comes to an attack that comes on our history and they present these written accounts <laughs> these written accounts say yeah but where's Buddha that mentioned during that time right history isn't just written accounts yeah written accounts only emanate from those who have knowledge of writing but yeah history is also oral history that comes from within communities that you learn from living within that community over years, getting the stories from the elders, the ancestors, the wise people, the keeper of stories, yeah? From within that, only Anyang Singh can tell the history of Anyang Singh. Anyone else can read books, put together some conclusions on that books and present it. They're in a conversation to it. That is not the history of the Hang Singhs. Only the Hang Singhs can tell the history of the Hang Singhs. Ali Fula Singh, was the godson of Kali Baba Nera Singh because their father Baba Ishar Singh had become Shaheed fighting in the Vardakalu Para yes. where the Buddha Dal had gathered the Dal Khalsa all together to come and defend the Gursikhs. Baba Nera Singh was a contemporary of Baba Deep Singh Ji who had taken Amrit from Guru Gobind Singh Ji. When the Buddha Dal under Nawab Kapoor Singh's time where Nawab Kapoor Singh Ji Jathidar Sahib passes their Seva of the Panth to Jassa Singh Alu Aliya to become Sultan al uh, uh a title which is those people associate with the Jathadar of Buddha Dal today. Discussing Alu Aliya's time, the Alu Aliya missile goes separate because that's the almost family missile. But the Seva for the Panth gets passed to, which at this time Buddha Dal is becoming Dal Khalsa, they're, they're, they're adapting to their needs. Right. Foreigners are attacking. Okay, and Buddha Dalla and Buddha Dalla Boyni come together with the Khalsa Panth. We're going to address this invasion that's going on. Fine. The Chindi missile, Baba Deep Singh Ji, their missions, Kali Baba Nena Singh Ji. Then it's after Kali Baba Jasa Singh Alu Aliya, we become Jahidar of the Panth. Let's make a contemporary of Baba Deep Singh Ji. Yeah. There, Kali Fula Singh is coming. So the lineage, yeah, at any given time, is gonna be Kal Sena, Buddha Dal, Tad Khalsa, Dal Khalsa. Like, it's look at the tradition of the people and where they're coming from, right? And that's what people miss when they're just looking at historical accounts of the Hang Sings. And they're missing that we're a community that passes on most of our history orally. So I think that's the significant thing, and it's probably one of the reasons why people have been effective at trying to dismiss it and ignore some of it. But it really is one of the reasons why podcasts like this, conversations like this, so that every single thing in Barna that can speak English should know this history that we're speaking of. Aji. Should know and be able to tell this, should be able to tell their children, be able to tell their grandchildren. You know, we were just talking earlier about how your nana told you about 1984. Your nana told you of his experiences and your nana told you of then he gave you his perception of it all of that whole Sangharis and then he told you what you should do in your life now, right? What you get from your elders isn't something you're going to get from a book. 
how to remind anybody else. Well, so I think as the Ang sings that this history that we've been able to learn from, you know, the likes of people on the walls and living with them and staying with them, that we can learn from conversations like this. We have to hold these stories alive for generations. And, and I think that's very important that Dungi and the Sangin watching this, they actually understand everything and then also do their own research on it extensively as well. Because we get that we learn about the Sikh Empire, but actually if understanding the Sikh Empire from when it was started by Guru Gobind Singh Jibara, that's very important because what we understand the Sikh Empire nowadays is just from uh, uh, Maharaja and Jeet Singh and that's the only basic information that we know. We don't know anything else uh, before that and then after that all we know is is Maharaja and Jeet Singh, the British came, they took over and we fought for freedom then we had Bhagat saying that for freedom against the British that's by it. Yeah and it misses all the other kind of words and characters doesn't it? Um, if we look at whether it's Baba Hanuman Singh um, in the after Akali Kula Singh whether it's Tar Baba Sahib Singh Kalatari, Alas Nang Singh, Vijay Dara Bakal Thakad, that you've got over 100 years of opposition to British Raj by the Akali Nang Singhs that we miss, that we're not talking about, that between Bahadur Ji Singh and Dalip Singh, so then and Pagan Singh, Kalatar Singh, Uddham Singh, the people that actually wore this the people that actually didn't save us wearing this, the people that actually gave their life for this, people who gave their life for this, the people who gave their life for this. Forget all that they don't know, forget not knowing their names, all that they don't know, we don't even know their history, what they did. Early. I mean, I, I've even heard like some song of question, like why do you even wear a blue banner? What's the importance of it? And if we don't know the basics of this, when this is what Baba Fateh Singh Ji blessed us with, of the Guru Maharaj told them you can't get a uh, Kalput through, then how can we even call ourselves say if we don't know this basic history? So I think it's very important that we understand this and even the basics of even how the start the, the start was changed when the British came and how they modified it to match the shape of the star with how the uniform looked after they took over, which we can cover up uh, after the uh, Anglo Sikh War. There's things like this is very important to note down and understand. Because we live in a time and age where we've got all the resources for it, but we need to take the initiative to actually talk about these things and understand that all these things happen and not just go with the current trends that you have. When you start a partner that you wear or a V shaped park, it doesn't matter what you wear, but you need to understand that the, the mana was the original the start that Guru Maharaj blessed us with, and you should be aware of the history behind it. And, you know, and Guru Granth Sahib Ji's Barney. And then Zlok Dvalida mentioned in parts of some even Tatham's notes spread. So it's like, you know, people like that, Blue Grand Savage can tell it can look yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? So I think um and again, it's one of the things we spoke about, isn't it? Um that we can have better sweetness in British museums here they have Pratam Damale. Right? Which is uh, you know, your heart scream my mind does every time I see these. Right. You want to just smash everything up, right? right? With anger. But on the other hand, you see, you know what? These people can come here and when they tell us, oh, Kuda Jande Shiv Ji Daya, it's like, I'm going to read the Nautic, a Kalpur Kura Damala, a Kalpur Kara Chand on the head, and their Chand even Shiv Ji thought, wow, that's beautiful. That's the Shrub Maharaj gave us, that Kalpur has. But at least people can see that, hold on, these guys that were actually gave their Shidi for the Khalsa Pant, they were wearing the Malde, they had Farle, they had Chakkar, you know? Again, our own historians, say, our own institutions, they will eradicate us from history. Our own Gurdwari were like, Nang Singh now, in this country, Gurdwari don't want the Hang Singhs in there, in Britain. But in British museums, they're showing you that the people that fought for the freedom of sex were the Hang Singhs. <laughs> exactly. You won't see any other pictures of a uh, Singh with a park girl fighting in a war. It's all the Kali Singhs. And I think that's very important to as well. Even with the recent collection in the Wallace Museum, uh, you can, uh, if you go there, you'll be able to see that there's a huge, uh, the Mala at the start with Jan Dore, Jakar, the Mala, and uh, even a Farla on it. I think that's very important to see if you're living in the UK as well. 
it's very important to see these things as it puts uh, these things that we're talking orally into perspective of we're not just saying it for the sake of it, but these things actually happen and the British have actually saved those artifacts as an evidence for us when people question us about the Dwala or everything we can they, they, they don't, we didn't even have to explain it to them they can just look at the accounts and the evidence that British have taken from us be like just look at that there's the visual proof of it yeah um, proof isn't it as right. evidence is you know some of this stuff was tragically taken as like war trophies and if it's quite sad to have it consigned in museums because for us it's our living it's our live it's it's living it's not our living anything it's it's living we're living it uh, and we still hold those things sacred we still hold the Fala sacred we still hold the Nishan Sahib sacred we still hold the Gurus the Mala any things the Mala is the Gurus you know there's a part of you that gets really sad at it being in museums but it, I think it comes down to one of the things that we said before, like there's not there's not much excuse now and increasingly what we encounter is less ignorance and more just hatred, isn't it? Um but I think one of the things you're saying about the Stara and we're fighting in the Mali, like this again is another really important point in one of the accounts of the Anglo Sikh wars, nah, so far maybe viewers who haven't or aren't familiar with the Anglo Sikh wars, this is the time after Mother and Ji Singh dies. And you know his sons, his successive assassination of his sons. Um uh, starting with uh Balaja Karak Singh, his son, then Abdul Singh, uh, Balaj Shah Singh, and you get down to when you're left with the child Leib Singh, right? Who eventually comes over here, then Queen Victoria makes her godson. But you've got all of that going on. The Sikh army and Sikh Brian were still willing to fight for their sovereignty and their empire. And there were lots of people who maybe had taken modern European tactics, who were maybe what we would now say Sardar as opposed to Khalsa. But what the British realized in those Anglo Sikh wars is there's, there's two accounts that strike out to me from my sort of study of them. One is the, one is the account whereby they say that. The presence of the Nakali Nahang Singhs bad into the rest of the six. So you've got the rest of the six, yeah, whatever style of bug, whatever uniform, whatever regiment, whatever wage, whatever rank, whatever they're fighting with. The fact that there's Nahang Singhs there, the British saying they were the one maddening them. They were the one like, let's kill them, let's chop them, like, let's like, you know, everyone else is charging on this. I know. We say, Ekanyang, Sara Pentatanga, Ekanyang Singh, both on that. Like, whatever the forge was, they were the ones that were like, get what your commanders are telling you, get what the Dogras are telling you, get these leaders who have already sold out your position that when they get you killed, let's just fight. Right? And the other one is they talk about Shi Vinik. And again, I, I say this a lot when I do Kata, where people think, well, talking about Shi Vinik is, is promoting Nasha to children, right? That's quite a stretch. She did get something mentioned that's taken in war. But in the Anglo Sikh wars, the British are saying that these guys, they've had, they take their sacred drink, and in times of war, it's putting them in a state of ecstasy. They're charging at a shouting Bahi, chopping at a shouting Guru. And one account of the British soldiers is saying these guys were walking on top of dead bodies like they didn't exist. Like they're in a bad state of frenzy and ecstasy. Right? Talking about his use in those contexts isn't saying, yo, get high before you go to college. <laughs> right? But, go home, get high, have some bungees and play plays. Like, that's quite a stretch. That's quite a stretch, which is only possible if one has no intelligence, no nuance, and no ability to discern. You. If you deny that history, then you're going to have these people doing the things they shouldn't be doing, say that, or you just accept that that have been in history that is a context like you know it's again those accounts of the British where they're talking about the Hang Sings and this is what ultimately leads to after the anglo Sikh wars where you have the four battles between December 1845 to around February 1846 where the Hang Sings now obviously realizing that Sikhs have been betrayed by their 
generous, right? And then Ulla Malda is coming up as well. <laughs> and Anandpur Sahib, the band of Anandpur Sahib, bathed them with a lot more safety than actually when the empire is gone to now go to Amritsar, because Amritsar was attacked. We'll come to this in a minute. Baba Hanuman Singh sends uh, the forge to towards Anandpur Sahib. Well. And they are the attacked in a lot of accounts. It says that Maharaja Karam Singh Patiala is the open fire. Actually, you, you mentioned the collection currently on it, the Wallace collection before that. Um, same group of collectors had a collection at the SOAS Museum, the Empire of the Sixth Collection. They shared some of their research. Actually, Maharaja Karam Singh of Patiala was hung by the British on the eve of the First Anglo Sikh War. Right, as a traitor of the empire. So, you know, remember, you know when the British ordered the troops of the Patiala, of these other guys that they thought were under their control, when they're like, we want to arrest this Akali Kula Singh, they put their weapons down and bow down to Akali Kula Singh. See, that was the part of oh, we not, whoever you are to give us orders, he's bigger than that. And you. Um, so it wasn't actually Maharaja Karam Singh. And the British didn't actually give coronation to his son, who I believe was part of the Linda Singh. So after they've done the dirty deed of attacking the Nang Singhs, unexpected, yeah, the war is over, the battle's over. Then shift to, we're gonna, the war is done. War is honorable. You meet on a battlefield, you set it, yeah. What happened afterwards isn't honorable. It's the same thing the Bubbles were doing. Same thing happened in 1984. But you're hunting down a group of people now to exterminate them. That was targeted at the Hang Sings. That wasn't, we're going to go and kill every Sikh. That wasn't, we're going to go and kill every Punjabi. That was now, we're going to kill, go and kill every Nang Singh. And that's what happened, right? East India Company, the British, the soldiers, now say about what well, in our day we would just call persecution. Yeah, shoot to kill policy, attack them where they're seen. Was the Hang Singh's a Shaheed, small surviving group of the Khalsa, goes to Hajul Sam, and the Hang Singh's who were left at the Akal Bunga, <clears throat> but those things, did a Granthi Singh see, Sri Avadar Singh see, it was not only of Akal Takhtan, but Patna Sahib, but other Gurbari with the sketches, we see that the Jatadars of the Takhtans and the Sevadar of the Takhtans were the Hang Singh's, they're wearing blue Barney, they're right. not wearing blue the Mali, they're not wearing Pyamya. So they were the things left at Akal Takhtar. And when the East India Company came, they went to the top of the Bungay, the law of Bungay, and they, as they came to get arrested, they would take as many soldiers as they could and jump, saying, you don't want to take us alive, we'll give us CD and we want to take as many of you as we can. But that's right. Um, so these are the sacrifices of the Nang Singhs, and look at that, you know, I know we'll talk more about it since then, but just the one thing I want people to think in. What, 1846, you've got the Hang Singhs as the head of the Akal Takhtar, you've got the Sivadars of Akal Takhtar, the Hang Singhs. And now, from the 1920s onwards, since the SUPs come in, and the Hang Singh cannot do Seva <laughs> or any of the Gurdwari the SUPC is in charge of. You cannot wear Barna and Adamalla and do Seva at any at the Asisek stand under control of SGBC. There's no clear evidence for how did what happened after the British. I'm sorry, the British left India a long time ago. This like, you know, we can't really we point. We say we gained as a you know, mm -hmm. gained freedom. We didn't we didn't make the actual move of physically getting that freedom. We just encompassed this ourselves with mm -hmm. Uh, the SBPC performing committees like this, which is exactly what Guru Maharaj told us not to do. We had our policy, you know, we had our jatidari, we had everything that was going so well in the in the way that it was under the way that it was meant to be. And we made these changes and look at the drastic impact that has yeah. happened from when we gained the independence. Yeah. So like for post Anglo Sikh war where Akali Baba Anuban Singh leads in the Khalsa do that. A um, lot of Nang Singhs migrate then towards Jusab, where 
is is she the star of Baba Pralada Singh, Allah Singh? Okay, uh, you know, they still, whether it's an internal fight at Hajusa or whether it's you know, the influence of the British in there. By the way, Baba Anumar Singh is Shaheed. Baba Allah Singh takes some of the things Hajus have, where Baba Pralada Singh becomes Shaheed. And Baba Gyan Singh becomes Dathadar. And they have to live in the jungles, survive persecution, uh, not of just the British, but of the Nizam of Hyderabad, and sees the Nahang Singhs coming and thinks they're going to threaten the internal stability of my kingdom there. <laughs> uh -huh. This is the time when the Nishan, the Gari, everything like, he is gone. Now, there's a few stories that I'll share that I learned from Baba Prem Singh from this time and, and Baba Jinder Singh and Baba Sattar Singh in the Katha. One is that Baba Gyan Singh in the jungles, it, he, remember if the Khalsa would go to every Jodamela, Vagi, Mbogatsa, Anandpur Sahib, Pahola, Sabuhi, Pandi from the side, like this was the Delta Vihir Chakravarti. And, and now they are having to live in jungles to hide, survive. And Baba Gyan Singh would do Prakarma, some things of a tree. And say to the Khalsa, hey, no Mughal Sarma. No. Imagine trying to keep your spirits high during those times. And you're saying as you do Prakarma of a tree, that during Prakarma of this tree, we've done Prakarma of Mughal Sarma. Firstly, because, you, because these people were talking about the living in the outside world and the elements of the move, how sacred things like trees were to them. And secondly, how like part by of a when they are at these targets, at these aspads doing these sevas, they've now got to where they're having to keep their spirits connected to them when they can't be in person. And Baba Gyan Singh once when doing in Pirag, Mr. Maharaj, you know, imagine being the Jathadar of the of the Khalsa Panth when you've just lost everything. You're no longer in Punjab, you're being persecuted where you are. You don't have Nishan Nagari. Yeah. There's only a handful of you there. Like, that's a far cry from just saying, Allu Ali, who becomes Sultan al Khan, the far cry from Makali Kula saying, is like, no, she this time still modern day Pakistan of course, Afghanistan. It is a sign of how much he conquered, right? And, uh, there's only a few of you left. Thank you. Right on? It's a very hard time to some where uh, Baba Prem Singh Vahiriya, he was a far classic. And there will be other part like those six listening here, yeah, and a lot of them are the Ang Singhs. But then Baba Ang Singh is here, so many of them. People say, oh, they need to have their chat, or whatever. In the Ang Singh, they say, they say, they say, they say, they And Baba Prem Singh will be here, goes to the castle of Hyderabad. He does two months of intense tap outside of that kila. So the various things happen with the Maharaj gives him darshan. The Maharaj of Hyderabad gives him darshan. He's a Muslim man. And listen, you know, he tells him of the likes of Bahadur Shah, of Muslim man emperors, who were servants of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, and you know, who then came with Guru Sahib to Hajur Sahib, and then he's there to the head of Hyderabad, and he's like, you know, you've got hundreds of years of history. Yeah, like we're not, we don't need to be enemies. Right? And then it's, they make the long journey back to the job, walking on foot. First they get to um, Shiddi, there's Arn, Shiddi, Baga, and Anandasam. So what happened in the time that Nahang Singhs are away from the job, yeah, there were some Nahang Singhs, like some of the battles in the Second Anglo Sikh War, there was some Nahang Singhs not just participating, but as the key agitators <laughs> creating that war, right? But when you destroy an army, you take away its headquarters, What's the next thing you're going to do? You're going to start and kind of brainwash the people against them, right? But the Hang Sings, there was a lot of like Umayyali Mahapulka then. And Mahapulka, Umayyali Siyanai, we there. They're also wise, they're also intelligent. Uh, Chidi Bag, some of the Hang Sings, Baba Isha Singh Ji, uh, Baba Gurmukh Singh Ji, and uh, even Nirmali Sadhus. And before that, then Babur she said to the Nirmala, we need some padi like <laughs> give us a couple of your phones. What do we have from some things? Some day Singh phones go live with Nirmala. Nirmala, they got some jaggy phones. 
Pak keluar ram pak sih kalau ram dem, tak dem, tak things get to dia. Sometimes ni ang things need satu hold ni tu. They both were really jumping up and down, saying "Baniya." And when there was a dispute over that land of Chidi Bag, the British Silda then comes and he says, "Okay, the Sultis, Mughal and Sindhi's family are saying it's theirs, and the Hang Singhs are saying it's theirs, and it goes back to Musab's time." He said, "If you can find that this is hard, if you can give me one thing that shows this was yours at the time of Mughal and Sindhi, then I'll give it to you." Otherwise, don't waste my time. Right. So these are done as a dispute. So this was one of like many, many, many land disputes that the Nahang Singhs had to go through um, from 1960s onwards. Unna ne mara inor das ki tia sanu koi nishani do and the jaga na like no hola they got tagre and there's the massive dodo where everyone goes to have shirdai. So where they give out shirdai. It's actually another jaga underground to that. Underground that is the jaga where Raghav has been happening since Guru Gobind Singh Ji's time. So then, oh, they dug up underground and they excavated the area. And obviously, then as they excavate, like yeah, there's a structure here. And it's a small room. Say that small room, small snare. Yeah. So the uh, Hang Singhs would use the sort of snare. They walk past us and prepare their chivniya dega. And they go, here you go. Here's our shrine of martyrs that's been here as the shrine of martyrs since the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And they get that. So they, they had to go through many disputes about the Ija Singh, the Hiriya, um, mm-hmm. about the Ija Singh Ji then becomes Jahidhar of Buddhadal, and then Baba Seb Singh Kalatari becomes Jahidhar of Buddhadal, and at the Akal Takat, because they'd, over time, being in Punjab for a number of years, winning over land cases, Having the vihir go around in Punjab, initiating new people into the band, they get their influence back to a time where they're at the Akal Takht again. Right. They're having to compete with the growing political forces. Yeah, the identification of the Khalsa is not just the Hang Singh. There's all types of groups operating saying we're the Khalsa, we're the Khalsa. Yeah, some calling themselves the Tad Khalsa. Everyone trying to use the name Akali. So Akali group is. Neel Bastara Pairai. Baba Daya Singh Ji, the Kishanar of the Panj Pairai, says that they are the Akalis who wear the blue dress, right? And gives the whole rant of reading Kalos, the Tindidi Ba, Tarablu Vivek, and they keep it going. That's given by Baba Daya Singh Ji. That tradition, as we know from Guru Arghavan Sahib's time onwards, and you know, we spoke about the British accounts of where they're saying, here's the Akalis, here there's tradition. Right. The 1900s, some start to call themselves the Akalis, the Akalidals, Kobra Akalis. And there was a lot of good Sikhs that were part of that, who were there trying to do good. Right. But we need to understand the position they are coming from is a position where everything's lost. They are trying to bring about and re-resonate some of that using those names, some of those traditions. But actually, you know, the more and more time's gone on, ignored the fact that the Akali folks is still here. <laughs> That's very true. And I think uh, going on from that, I'd like to also point out of how the disputes regarding uh, other important grants as well, how of the SGPC, they also very disrespectfully removed the uh, uh, Prakash of uh, Dasan Kansai from Akalata and how of post British colonialism, we have been so programmed in the way to think for the basic Six hundred. That's watching that don't know much about Sikh affairs. That Dasam Grant was also bestowed upon us by Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. But it's since then it's been said, oh, that it's not. It's been written by writers, different writers, different kavis, and it's not the true good money. It can just be spoke about yeah. that as well. So it's a couple of points there in there. Firstly, so when Kali Baba Sahib Singh Ji is at the Akal Takht, Baba Sahib Singh was the real threat to the British Empire. In terms of their large of the uh, two reasons, firstly, he'd come out as a someone who'd held a very prominent position within the administration, so he knew his laws very well. Nice. He knew the ways of working. He knew right that as Han is um, the Hang Sings. Yeah, all we need to do is collect proper history, present it in the right type of way to the judge. 
when our case and of the appointed is, you know, again, it's another thing about colonialism or legalism or even here living in this country. So I think we've got a brilliant judicial system in this country. And even if politicians are doing one thing or someone else is doing another thing, when it goes to court or through our courts, like, you know, the right to a fair trial, the right to representation, like, there's something, like, um, British got right. And, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, they were where they could. Yeah. And recognize that, yeah, we are kind of fortunate to live here as well. But that's a threat then. And he was also, because again, he'd worked in the administration, he was very well respected. He was Baba Sam Singh, that he would go to work. Yeah. He'd be given a chair. Yeah. He then, when many of the, and remember the British from the 1800s onwards, they're making deals with anyone who holds any type of power. Yeah. It's all coming out now. Many big sick organizations, people, they are whatever they emanate from, given massive amount of lands by the British. You want to oppose us and die? Or you want to take all these lands and live in live as kings? Yeah. There were those who are like, nah, we're going to fight and die. Yeah, who fought in just now and things, the likes of Baba Maharaja Singh Ji. So when the British are like, come to terms with us in a treaty, and pick which one, which part of Punjab we will make you in charge of. He goes, um, why is the treaty about which part of Punjab I get to keep where Punjab is ours? If you want to make a treaty with me about which part of England you're going to give me, I'll meet with you because Punjab's already ours, you know? Right. And and they then exile Singapore where they, they, they you know, become a real a little sicky there while living in jail, passing. There were those who opposed and then there were those who came out really wealthy. And a lot of the prominent aristocratic families of Punjab today come from those families who said, oh, like, no worries, we'll take this much land and give you our support to the British. That's how colonialism and post-colonialism works. Where the servants of the masters become the new masters when the large change is over. Um. Um, and so Baba Sahib Singh Ji goes to jail because he refused, then Pandahan sings the way that Talwar, you know? And the British, early accounts from the 1800s, <clears throat> are like every sick raise a sword, grows up learning how to fight with a stick. Before he can tie his turban, he already knows how to use a sword as a young boy. So these men are very difficult for us to fight sword to sword, because the swords are so good they cut through us. Our officers get a few months of training. They've been learning how to do it since they were little boys, right? It's like, imagine now, go I did I mean, <clears throat> playing football at school, somebody as big as I'm playing hockey. Imagine you're not playing football, cricket, hockey, using your iPhone on Instagram, on YouTube. Imagine all you're doing is then you fight with a stick, okay. and then a sword, right? So there's a whole demilitarization process where a very famous quote in Naveen, is that Naveen Pantrakash with Wadi Guru Khalsa, written by again, Gyan Singh, Nirmala, you using it. Hermala, what is it? He's actually written some really important history of Nyang Singh. He's like Baba Nerna Singh and Akali Kuda Singh. And he's like, he's even saying by then, in the mid-1800s, like, that this video that Anbul gave us of how to use weapons is being lost. And it's very rare there. And then you've got Nyang Singh still walking around with spear swords, everything. Because even, like, Nam Tari's, remember, at one point with an armed race, fighting like, British imperialism, but killing people who were slaughtering cows, Inspiring against bringing down the British Empire using violence, and then we're pacifying to not want to wear a kapan, which is going to tie a little one in a ganga. Right? And I met all Nang Singhs that come from Nang Tari communities, and they were like, the reason we come to Nang Singh Jormele is because we know that this is who we were. We won Dasam, we won Sarblo, we won Shastar Tari, we believed in the same things, but obviously a divergence happened. Then the followers of Baba Ram Singh Ji then proclaim him to be a guru. It, Baba Sam Singh Ji then is subject to a conspiracy where you're like, he is a Jatadar of Akal Thakur, he is Hang Singh, he is educated, he has got a master's degree, who speaks English, who is fighting for the right, who all seeks to carry weapons. <laughs> they're, they're worse fight. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to jail and he's been imprisoned in Nabba jail and Baba Son Singh Ji, the grandfather of Baba Tar Singh Bidhi Jandiya, he goes and sets up the Bek Langar in Abba Jail. It's from there that Baba Son Singh Ji is then given Nishan Nagare and, and uh, Baba Bidhi Jand. 
uh, his lineage but again that time becomes a dull the then goes Jagarwalti does Murus does in Pakistan which is one of the reasons why they're so big in Madja and is because for three years not just in three generations right, but not just in modern day Amritsar even when Pakistan was part of India they're, they're going on like you know what I mean it's why they've got such a big influence they, they're dull there and then he sets up the Salam of the Bay. Now, Baba Sahib Singh, the other Baba Sahib Singh is referred to Jahidar Baba Sahib Singh, Kalatari. Kalatari means the miraculous man, the magical man, because it, many of were so common around him. When the jailers, when they start to see this, they recognize the mentality of people like Baba Ji, which is either we'll fight you in battle or we'll fight you legally. And if you imprison us and throw us in jail, then we'll just sit in jail, you know, meditate on our Kalpur to bring down your Raj. And they realize this guy's an actual saint. We don't want him in our jails <laughs> meditating on God with all his miraculous powers that he has telling God <laughs> to like, bring down these rulers, right? right? So instead, what do they do? <laughs> yeah, anti Dasam campaign. Yeah. You will not find a single source before. The British come into job, which is against the Sultan. Yeah, you won't find a single Sikh group that doesn't believe in the Sultan. Yeah, or any other role in Barney, or any other role of, of even Guru Granth Sahib Ji. You won't find a Sikh group that comes before the 1900s doesn't believe in Ragmala. All of these arguments, all of these debates start cropping up in the Pant. Distracting them from their destiny, Pijazing Pashoriya starts up the debate about Ragamala. Yeah. Then he starts a debate about we need to take Dham and places of Vishnu and all of these things that he's like, we need to put the word Vargu into Guru Granth Sahib, we need to take this body too. He, when they become so Siyane, starting at Ragamala, then start trying to change them. This is the origins of where these conspiracies started from. People again need to realize this, not just follow blindly what they're learning in small groups, right? These are really sinister things attacking the heart of a good sex relationship with Guru Sahib. And that's the body. Then we realize the British so, is a Christian missionary uh, who writes an account, that's the one. And he, you know, it's the famous quote where he compares the Khalsa and the Nahang Singhs to be like the Knights of Malta. So he says, amongst the Sikhs, Luke Owen saying he has created this martial order of the Akalis. And you know, it's, again, it's another one. It's a lot later than sketches of the Sikhs, but it's another detailed account of the Nang Sikhs. And he recognizes that, you know, they, they have the Granth of the 10th Guru. That's where the martial body. So, you know, that whole what we were talking about, they started at the beginning of the 1800s. Okay. It's going on and on and on and on and on, isn't it? Then you, these guys get their source of power, the Sumbani. Reading Guru Granth Sahib Ji makes them into saints. Reading Dasam Granth makes them into warriors. It's why Santa Nelson calls them into Ramali. Our greatest general in Shaheed, the last century, says, it's not for cowards. Right. <laughs> right. It's not for cowards. Well, that's another thing to point out as well. Like, <laughs> I think maybe the arms are that it was briefly about Dasam Granth. They literally associate it with the Hang Singh as well. But as you mentioned, Santa Nelson Ji went around it. They were from Pixar. Everyone else believed in it as though it's only recently after the, the, the British where he was started opposing it and made it seem like it was only the Hang Sings that actually believed in Dasim Khan Sahib yeah. as well. Any Sikh order, any Sikh Dathibandi, any Sikh organization that existed before the 1900s believes in it, those who don't give afterwards, man, people use your friends. Yeah. It's as simple as that. God give us brains, if we don't use them or we get lost, we got ourselves to them. But a single sick group before the 1900s doesn't believe in the authenticity of this and them as the writings of Guru Gobind Singh. Like for me, that ends the debate. But <laughs> this is it's done. Anji. There's not much that you can say when Guru Maharaj wrote it themselves. It's just that these silly questions that arise, whether like it was other writers, whatever. And it's just these things that since, as you mentioned, like the debates brought up about Ragamad and everything, I think that's what sparked this manamat of just opposing everything. Like, it's very important to, to do vajar on Granth Sahib, 
but physically questioning it, we say Guru Mani or Granth Sahib, and Guru is Bani. And then, if you're questioning Bani, do you even believe in your Guru? Do you believe in Sikhi? You're contradicting yourself yourself by questioning these Bani. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's the dangerous track that a lot of people get on, where Guru Granth Sahib Ji will take years of study, right? That and, and says the Pengi podcast, the messagings out there for young people. People haven't even done the Jabji Sahib something. And then they want to like get into the base of our other grants and here's this quote from James Park and here's this quote from Israel Nam and here's this and it's like Bravo Bella, Jabji Sahib this and here, Carlo, do you get the names and here, your Pans Grant is and here, listen to some Katha of Mahapur that will come from Sampurda, read some speak. If you can't do that, read some English translation. Bella Bani Nam Jodo. Yeah. Bella Bani Nam Jodo. Once you done that after a long time of studying with Grant Sahib Ji, yeah. You then come on to the Sangran. We're talking about a serious amount of time, a full time study of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, before you come on to the Sangran. And now, because a bunch of people, like in the last century, who had like degrees in mechanical engineering or chemistry, and just because they had that, some qualification, colleges, and then Canada, like some books about against it, because they've got doctor in front of their name. Doctor. Mm-hmm. College study, university, that, I'm sorry. <clears throat> what about the institutions that the gurus made? Because the education systems, again, let's go back to British accounts in Punjab, they're recognizing that, you know what, we messed these people up. The education system we brought in and tried to impose on them messed them up. It's not organic. They had a brilliant education system before we got here. I don't know. Up, I think we, like, the Gore really smart, the Gore really, the Gore really educated. We had an education system that was brilliant. Um, and when people were educated, and instead of trying to like rewrite Sikhi and make their own Jatibandi and organization and everything else, which is fine if you're growing Sikhi, but to then cause divides and be like, we're the Khalsa Panth, they aren't. It's like, we can, we've been around five, six hundred years, I'm pretty sure, we'll still be around. Many, 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 many zeros, zeros and zeros on right. after that. Like, we can, many plants, beautiful trees. Even dark clouds will, will come and go in between. Um, but Baba Sahib Sainji then, so his whole conspiracy, right? <clears throat> Couple of things attacking Turkakan. The SGPC read a book in the 1920s where they say that our religious freedoms have been taken away from us. We're no longer allowed to practice Tartaka or Kal and we're waiting for the day we can practice Tartaka again, right? When Attempts are made to ban like the common parts of Tatka. The Ali Dal and the main Sikh parties do a Tatka conference and do loads and loads of Tatka. Right? So who's against Tatka? Who's against Shika? It's not it's never been the Akal Takra. The Akal Takra even today says you can eat Tatka. The Akal Takra at no point has the Akal Takra been against Tatka. That's very important. Okay. Right? Um but and this hyper notion of vegetarianism comes from within Sikh traditions. You have other orders, the Adas, the Malay, the Texals, the everything, every way that those big trees sprout, many beautiful branches in the 1900s and to then various other groups. You've all had Sadhakar so like Damgir and Imar in them, that were the group of Rab cells, which is like Wilkie Sikhi's greatness. But that's where vegetarianism was. It was never there for the fudge. Not as in Baba Santa Singh, Pantokaj Katan, but this is something quite not, isn't it? Bringing that, Thank those Katas there. There's something in there when he goes on, like, Ni Fawaj, Yung Dizi Mara, they tell there, we in that saga, Kitna Torti Le Arasiga. That when you're traveling around through the jungles, that when you're meant to go and find so many vegetables to cook, or like, shoot a few animals, you bring it back, you cook it, and you give it out. People like, yeah, but that was then. What about now? Mate, if you're not practicing it on the regular, trying to keep it alive, good luck doing it when the time comes. That's just like, for example, if you have an army and then they have their monthly drills for shooting, and they'd be like, you don't need to do that, you're in the war. Yeah. Just don't tell them time over when it's time for them to fight a war. If they don't have to load a yeah. gun, what are they going to do? And they're like, it's Jeeb Das Wad, man. I remember, like, back in the Dal, yeah, you could have Mahaprasad, yeah. You're like, chewing that one bit for like 10 minutes. 
they're like, there's no deal with that swab here. Yeah. I really wish this would finish. You have that swab for me is when you're getting vegetarian products, putting them in meat flavors and saying the like, oh, that the guy can't do it. You have that They are like, which ones do you have that swab? But nowadays you have people rec- uh, replicating meat based dishes on uh, uh, vegetarian foods. Yeah. So so you have that, right? And then you have a pango bean there, right? And but sometimes when we do the great, even if it's just the young, We've had in the last few months, yeah, just in the last year, places we, we've gone and done Shirdanya, yeah. People have asked for the Gray of Home. People have then come to Jordan and they then take Amrit. It's Lotus Nere, it's Kalaya, yeah. It's Lotus Nere, Mara, the time to Karkadi on there, yeah. So many asthans around in our Taram, we see Lotus Nere there. From the time of Maharaj, Apne Ragre. Right? When it's practiced in a certain type of way. No one is abused. So there's a kala there. And you know, people will come to Nang Singh's give Padam, people will come to give Lechia, people will come uh the last the right? If you're a priest and someone comes and gives you something, you give as an offering, are you going to refuse it? Or are you going to say, I recognize you have faith for these traditions, I will honor your faith in these traditions, and you have belief that by giving these things to us as the Aung Sings, and by us giving prasad and giving to Sangat in a responsible way, not giving, let's give Gadi Deg to Sangat. Yeah, it's Bada Kishe Kadange, Dithi Marjada Hagiya, Amrit Vil De some do practice that. Yeah. That's yeah. All of these places, in it? Things in ours are full of Bumariya, okay. Problems in our lives, in it? Ragdala, Kimara, no, that's the road, no, Bani, but there's a color in these things. Vidi, Vidi, change Vidi, Nal Brown. Anything you do. It has a prescribed technique and tradition behind it, formed with fear, meditation, and devotion, as power. Right? Thanks. But again, it's the propaganda against them. It's not the Thitar full master's degree, yeah? English world, the port of a chain of jail, like the yeah? It's in Bakrin Chatakon, the Pakapin, the yeah? So the propaganda is telling 60, you've got a Jatar of the Kaltakid who's educated, winning four vows for you. Is up preserving the historical kinds of Sikhi, is the killing goats, yeah, which has been going on since Maharaj's time. As a practical reason to that, so like yeah. I mentioned, like, yeah. there's, there's a way to make a Nagara and you make the actual drum. You need skin, you need skin to actually yeah. make the drum beat. Mm. You can't do that with a random bumper. Yeah. There's many, many reasons why Jatka and Shikara are not only for the dietary reasons, but things like that as well. Even with uh, mm-hmm. bones as well, it's like uh, if you do a chantka of a bakra or you have other shots that we have shots there's a hey, you could have a fish comes like the mukha would probably be made of ivory and that ivory would be coming from an animal. There's many reasons that shikara and chantka is done and it's not the way what we've associated it or that Sangha thinks of it is is for the dietary reasons but there's also many reasons such as Nagara and other reasons why it's been done. Yeah. I mean, now in most Gurdwari, the tabla skins come from exactly. South India, where uh, a lot of skilled Muslim artists are preparing them. And it's coming from boats that have been killed in the halal way. And then uh, Muslim artists hear them because they have a lot of skill in it. Right. A lot of Nagari come from their court club, where Muslims, because they practice the tradition of slaughtering them, they also practice the traditions of what you do afterwards. Right. So that sukha, chidi dey gya, chartka, and then dasam karan, yeah. Kedi chendu adi bani and kamir ye bani. These three things. This is by when it trigger on the hang sing. These are the three things, right? But, these are the three things that then become the propaganda but, against the hang sings. The, there's an account they used to go around of how the hang sings emerged from here from Tamil, yeah. This account is like the most, the most made up fairy tale, right? 
but it spread like wildfire on the internet a few years ago. And it's told in certain groups there was a really dirty glove BB and she had like Namras. She got into beat us and she dragged out the nan things from their hair and beat them with sticks and all that, right? And it's like, firstly, like, up on board, yeah, they were going to glorify young women going and beating old men because of what their, like, traditions are and dragging them out. Our culture isn't one that treats those younger people to treat older people like that, yeah? Even if we've got issues with a girl like me, we still won't give old uncles you can't like that, yeah? We need, like you still have, you still come from a community that has respect for others and elders, right? And not just let's go and attack someone for violence now because we disagree with. They're not, but like it's like mate, like <laughs> come on, right? Benji. But when the Gorsix all come together, and Baba Sahib saying, "Gee, it's like right, no more gunna In the same way, Baba Santa saying, "Does base and times make more sangat no fair we." Sangat de Sangat with Sangat Alpha was said to you. Anjali Guru de Piaria doesn't matter if they're right, doesn't matter if they're wrong, they think that they are. All Guru Sikhs have still given power to that. Baba Sahib says that, that there's no point of us doing everything we're doing. And I start fighting and killing our own people at Yakal Takat. Right? They leave and a BB hits them on the leg and breaks the stick, it breaks, the, it breaks his leg. Baba's leg, Baba leg gets broken. Right? All of us have seen Kalatari's leg is being broken by the BB. Now, obviously, imagine like we've got pictures of Arjatidars. Anji. Right? A BB gets close and we say once, like, pitch on for people out and they come out, tired by a touch. They feel really like ready to push it off. Mike, you know, hear what we're saying here? Not out of like offense or utter disrespect, but we've got Arjatidar, a mom, look, hundreds of thousands of, you know, thousands of people coming to them, see them. They don't want people bowing and touching their feet, coming into their space all the time. Like, give them a bit of space right. to be around, right? Like, they're a human being. So, like, the idea of someone coming and hitting with a stick, yeah, <laughs> like, man, hands are going to roll before that happens. Right? Hands will roll before that happens. But Baba Ji says, These are our daughters, our sisters, and our mothers. That tells you something about dancing. That tells you everything you need to know about Baba Sahib and the And everything you need to know about people who have poured these made up accounts, how Nam Singh will move to the Al Takhan. They say, They are bringing up they are bringing up Pernaya, or there's all the Nam Singhs, but then they spit at you, they've already hit you, they've already um, spit at you, hit you with sticks, break you, whatever they do, we're going to do nothing, we're going to say nothing, we're going to leave you peacefully. Right? You just can do. We go to Akali Fula Singh Burj. Now, then Dasan Granth is thrown out, thrown out, the pump of Akali Fula um, And then, yeah, it's a downward spiral from there, isn't it? Uh, we have witnesses of many of the sick groups, but part of the, the dialogue and the conversations that happened. Very sensitive discussion, but it's one that our community agrees to pick up on. There was only a hundred year agreement between Baba Sahib and they were educated. It's like signing a lease, right? This is the months. Even Gyan Nikhil Singh Ji, who was Kastar of Kyakal Thakur, when, you know, he one of the ones involved in excommunicating Baba Santa Singh. His one, as Jathar of Akal Thakur, as Savadwan from Tanmitak Sal and a very sort of senior person in the Kali Dalai Shinkisi environment, even as someone coming from that tradition, he still says that up until the 1920s, Baba Sahib Singh Kalatari, the Jatadar of Bhutanar, the Jatadar of Akalatak, I'm saying even the one that excommunicated Baba Ji is saying that this is the, this is the tradition of the Akalatak. That's an indisputable claim. Right? And so they say Baba Ji does a hundred year lease with the SUPC. Now, this is why since then, the SUP is always anything with Jatadar of Bhutanar passed away and they want to get their own Jatadar. We want to give that Jadadar any award, title, and anything they can, just so he doesn't say, like, your lease is on me, off you go. <laughs> and, and challenge that, because it's, it's about not challenging the authority, right? It's saying, you're a committee. Who made you in charge? A lot of people go, since you made a committee, but the first time I was in charge, I'm sure they made the calls upon the bunch of Piari and said that those who live within the Mariata mm. are my sons, have all my blessings, I'll be with them. These are all the teachings of Sarlogran. 
ਖਾਲਸਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਰੂਪ ਹੈ ਖਾਸ ਬਸਤਰ ਰੂਪ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਯਾਰ ਉਹਦੇ ਚ ਤਾਂ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਰ ਤਾਂ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਵਾਰ ਇਹ ਸੀ ਪੀ ਸੀ ਦਾ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਵੇਅਰ ਦਾ ਰੂਪ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਸੇਵਾ ਯਾ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਸੇਵਾ ਆਨ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਬਾਸ ਆਫ ਯੰਗ ਸਿੰਘ ਵੇਰਿੰਗ ਬਾਣਾ ਵੇਰਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦ ਮੱਲਾ ਯਾ ਹੀ ਗਿਵ ਦੀ ਰੋਨ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਰਮਸ ਹੀ ਗਿਵ ਦੀ ਰੋਨ ਸਟਾਈਲ ਆਫ ਪਾਲ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਟੂ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਸੇਵਾ ਵਾਸ ਦਾ ਬਟ something that we need to understand as a big problem there's something that we don't address yeah. something that i didn't think fun watching would even even think about until you said it now they and now they actually think like oh wait when we go to darbar side you see their banner it's completely different like you see them with the cape okay, you might see them with a the blue banner but they're wearing the dummy as well yeah and i see the bug you can't hide the mala right. so i think the only people that have pop up five will be saying pangada ma chalo me lag gayi kal ji as a uh, brother soul pictures of it you can see had a fadla got sindhi pak and the porta so he's got a fadla baba santa singh is a fadla for the seva dal but because they were doing seva how mandir sahib he couldn't wear his pana he couldn't have the mala baba is still goes not like he still deserving of a fadla that's not going to do a fadla that's like that's a huge amount of doing lifetime seva at sindhi par sahib to have that what a very an exception right But it's like, in our workplace, I go to work in my bada. Someone's like, you can't wear your bada. I'm straight away talking about it. Man, that sounds a lot like discrimination to me. And I'm very sure the law in our country is for discrimination. Let's look at Siki. I can't, I couldn't, as I'm saying, do seva at the bar side, at a bar market, or these places, as a grunty, because I'm saying, that sounds like discrimination to me. I don't know where that's got a place in Sikhi. Uh, we went to recognize people of different religions as one. But instead, our systems are inbuilt with an aversion and a hatred towards dark things. Belgium. Because for other groups, yeah, not a dig at anyone, it's looking at why is the dark thing experience different. You can still go to Taksal and become a Granthi. Many do and they go on to become Prakhats. That's a good thing because they've learned from Mahapur. They've learned the Rabani the right way, they've learned the art in the right way, and um, they've had a Jeevan where they've lived in a Prat and Tamparada and gone on to learn that Vidya and then represent our highest institutions. It's a good thing that they can do that, but you can do that as you're from Taksal and then go and have a career that go and work and then, you know, do your Pratara around the world, even if you're part of is it become a Singh Sahib or Head of Grand Theater, all of these things. If you want to do it as a Khalsa, in Barna, as a Nihang thing, you can. So our experience of colonialism and post-colonialism is quite different. We were driven to the point of execution and persecution. And then after that was being outcast from within our own community. And that's a very important uh, thing as well. But another thing is that even with whatever the British has done to us and the effects of that, us being the Sangha in the West as well, we've slowly gone back to our roots and we've adapted their traditions as well. Like we see across the world, whether that be North America, Europe, Australia, wherever, we've also now established them, Shanagare everywhere as well. We have our Jordan Wille. You may have a Godgarez, or we have those moments where people are against us, but we still fly those Nishans up in the air. We do our Mahalehe. We uh, bank in Nogare, we do everything. And I think that's something that we should be very proud of as well. That like even after the British, they did so much. There was a time where there's only a handful of things left. They, they lived in jungles. We still come up to the point where across the world, we've started emerging the forge as well. And that's a very great achievement that we've made. And I hope with Guru Maharaj's get far, that will continue to flourish as well. Mm. I think as well, when we look at likes and sacrifices of Baba Sahib Singh Kalatari Hana, who were, he was watching to become Jathadar, the decision had come down to Baba Mith Singh Ji, and one of our greatest bargaining right. that we've had, one of the greatest Gursikhs to wear the Guru Pana from Maharaj's time. And, you know, he's been appointed by Abramgani's decision then, uh, and when he's in jail, his, his bhajan, his words were, you know what, you're trying to persecute us here, like this time will come, it'll flourish in your countries, right? So it's like the hardship, persecution, and that they endured 
that's like going in the ground and being planted as seeds and sprouting up, right? So it's like the weight and sacrifices of those beings mean everything to us. Mm-hmm. We are the living prophecy that they spoke of, gave the sacrifice for. Sanji. Very important. And even going about Baba Santa Singh Ji and their uh, importance of how, uh, as well as Dasam Granth being uh, sidetracked and pretty much taken away from all the thugs. Sarabro Granth was very affected as well. And at the time of Baba Santa Singh Ji, they nearly went alope like Yanni Ji, Yanni Shay Singh Ji have said in their Katha. And they went on to doing the very important seva of getting the Sroops printed, getting the Santhya done, and everything. Uh, that's another very important thing that has happened in the recent years by Baba Santa Singh Ji. And the unfortunate thing is that they've been so sidetracked and said into that they were working with the government during 84 and all these other false claims and stuff. I think that's very important to understand as well. Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned Gandhi Shea saying there's one of um, the talks he did recently, right? And I, and I think he said it in as blunt terms as it can be said. Yeah. Uh, and I'll only say it in English for those that don't understand what he said. He's saying, you're putting restrictions on what we eat, on what we drink, and how we dress, and then you expect us to die for you. Yeah? Meaning that Sikhs are like, we were not saying, we were like, let's, let's now fathom what we've just spoken about. You're telling us what we should and shouldn't be eating, what we should and shouldn't be drinking, how we should and shouldn't be dressing. And praying. Yeah? And praying, and what we should and shouldn't be reading. Kicking us out of our houses. Ibn Hargobin Sahib gave us from the Kal Takat's time, Kal Sena time, Kal Buddha time. The Pai Mani Singh Ji when they were appointed, Ali Fula Singh when they were appointed, Baba Gurbak Singh Shi, Dan Singh when they gave their Shi Di there. They're kicking us out of all of our houses. Yeah? And then they come and die for us. Right? That doesn't happen. Because, mate, we have to survive. We can't put our survival down to anyone else. Because we've seen how everyone else has used us and then abused us. It's a really sad bit of truth to fathom, but it needs to be fathomed. You can't tell Nahang Singhs what they should and shouldn't be doing. And then when something happens, expect Nahang Singhs to be like, you know what? You don't know they have been there. So many Nahang Singhs were she in 1984. So many, uh, if it wasn't for Nahang Singhs at the farmers' protest, get the people there getting shit that, yeah? We would have got shit there, and they would have got that persecution would have followed them all the way into Punjab, eight years of Punjab. And the Hang Singh sitting at Delhi, yeah, the same people were a few years ago were all posting pictures and posters and next thing for John, yo, these are my brethren, all of that stuff. When every junkie clip of them slapping <laughs> up the police officers, <laughs> they'd be posting that with uh, a yeah. track in the background of Agani Kula saying, yeah. but when it comes to now, they'll be like, keep that gear. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? That's people. So as Nahang Singh, I think this is an important point, never get caught up in people's hype. Yeah? People will use you. Go, go, go to election coming up. One committee is going to be like, I think I'll do Pangi Apo, aka, yeah, it's not, can you go, can you make the other party look bad? All this. This is how Nahang Singh is get used. People want to diminish your traditions and then be like, come to a program, stand at the front, it looks nice in the pictures. But the Nahang Singh, you should be like, come with certain traditions. You're welcome to come. We're happy to come anywhere. We're welcomed. You bring some traditions with us. You bring some beliefs with us. They're very visible. You don't like that. Don't pick and choose. So we want you to come and fit into our construct, what we expect someone to be. Nah, we don't fit into anyone's construct. We just try to fit into what Guru Maharaj gave us, she Singh gave us, and, and get from our historic towns. And, yeah, I think that was a great discussion for Sikha Dias and the effects of the British Empire and how even going post the British colonialism, how how bad the effect was and what we could learn from it. The sickle that we get from what has happened to us and what they managed to extract out of Punjab, the artifacts that they have, and looking at it through them, because as you mentioned that uh, as the Hung Singhs, they weren't ever keen on writing about their own ideas. They were more about doing the Barney preserving the body and fighting in junks as it happened, as it has been happening. And I think that's very important for the Sangha to understand. And then I hope that they make sure that they do go on and do this research and keep this in mind of the struggles that the Hang Singh's fought for 
throughout history and that they do understand it and they teach others about it as well. So I hope uh, the song really likes this episode. It's our second episode and I hope you uh, like our following episode as well, which will be released soon. So from that, we'd like to give our buddy from the podcast. So why he could she call us? Why he could